Some of these defenders may need to take it easy. You might pull a master. This is one from K Bishop comic. This is accurate right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. This is a comic accurate right there. Oh my god. Kate Bishop does have these dumb outfits from her comic. Oh my god. Do you know what Kate Bishop isn't though? An Avenger. Look it up. Look it up. This may come as a shock. You may want to sit down. But this game don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. The people this game needs to play it, to survive, to succeed, don't care about Kate Bishop. And it's not because they're sexist or bigots or even because they're normies. It's mainly because it says Avengers on the box. R remember? That's what it said this game was. So, as I iterated earlier, Kate is not an Avenger. But if you really want to talk, let's acknowledge them butchering her actually beautiful outfits. You could clearly see these aren't comic book accurate suits. The Hawkenberg. Serious? Man, if you genuinely need the difference between inspired or adapted from an identical, meaning one-to-one -one or comic book accurate explained to you, then the problem is bigger than an eye exam or a dictionary can solve. No one's disagreeing that there was an attempt, but just because farts smell like fresh cinnamon rolls to you doesn't mean that that is reality. Now. I know it's against NPC protocol to admit, but I don't even like Kate Bishop. But if I was a fan, I'd be disgusted by this. I'd be saddened to know that this was as much effort as they were going to give. It ain't about the fact that she ain't wearing a skirt. It's about the lack of attention to detail. Call it integrity, call it penny pinching, but I could never defend poorly executed, lazy asset flip skins. Was funny, is that the NPC tactic of pretending that it's personal, as opposed to a recognition that you and your biased opinions potentially damage this game in its future, is so typical that you use the same argument with the devs. Criticism isn't hate, and a recognition of bias isn't a personal attack. But allow me to acquaint you with reality. People are free to like what they like, but we all need to objectively recognize what sucks and be real so this game can get better. Ignoring, or worse, refusing to admit what sucks helps kill this game. So when I'm the only one admitting bullshit that doesn't benefit anyone like locked difficulties, even in the face of you clowns telling me, that's not true, these aren't locked, that doesn't affect me, I'm cognizant of the impact that decisions like these have on the overall playability, image, and good faith among gamers pertaining to this game. To put it simply, more people play good, less people play bad. Right now, the Marvel's Avengers developers need to be told that removing features before the replacement is available is a bad idea, and they're going to be rolling back that foolish decision, and y'all out here defending these people? And all of it wouldn't be so bad if they did one thing. Just represent! But Marvel's Avengers doesn't represent. Spider-Man PS4, they represent. Miles Morales, you already know. Marvel Heroes, mobile games, Fortnite, the list goes on. If this game gets relevant, I honestly can't wait for bigger creators to start talking about this, and hopefully their audience is big enough to where they won't be able to get away with being so deliberately blind to this game and its flaws, man. In the interest of education, you know what a game as a service or a live service game does? It changes. They evolve, they receive updates, some good, some bad, and with vocal critique or feedback from a player base, a good live service finds a direction that satisfies the players enough, at the very least, to keep them interested, playing, and in some cases, spending. Uh, yeah, you're following me? It's almost like a PowerPoint presentation at an investor meeting. Marvel's Avengers is uninteresting, borderline unplayable, and lacks the appeal to drive sales and incentivize spending. In the future, this may change, but right now and for the last five months, it has gone unchanged, and what I say is the truth. 
However, instead of admitting this fact and advocating for the change that they'd like to see, as I have done, unpaid NPCs in the community ignore the glaring problems and try to convince people that the game's actually great. You know what I mean? Like a really, really fat person looking at someone skinny and going, that's actually not what beauty is. Your view of beauty is wrong. And you're a hater. But actually, no. You could just be fat. As passionately as a flat earther will try to convince you that the world isn't round, it is. A colorblind person may see a color a certain way, but it doesn't change what it actually is. Looking at Epic's Fortnite that changes weekly, has a variety of different modes, is freely available, and has skins so appealing that I shit you not, people barely playing the game will log into that bitch to buy them, it's actually crazy to me and refreshing that a community for a game that's memed to be for kids is capable of accepting valid criticism without considering it an attack on everything that they stand for that needs to be defended to the death. Fortnite recently had a Tron collaboration, and people took issue with an orange style not being available like it is in the movie. The visors for the women were also opaque, but not for the men. And I was one of the people who uh, disagreed with that. So I articulated as much as in a video, and did the community feel the need to delete the post because too many people were agreeing with it? No. Was it instantly regarded as toxic because it wasn't exclusively positivity blown up the ass of Epic? Nope. I made one post. The moderators didn't feel the need to chase me all over the internet about it because I had a different opinion. Just floated to the top in a capacity where I hope somebody sees it and we will wait for a response. But even if they don't cater to me, at the very least, Fortnite gonna keep getting shit on a weekly basis. In the interest of clarity, I make these videos because I can tell Crystal Dynamics things that they don't know and potentially wouldn't realize for days. I have that smooth sailing energy, while everyone around me seems to want to ignore the ship sinking and hope that the holds just sort themselves out. So the next time you convince yourself I'm a hater, when I'm doing more for this game than you ever could, and the next time you think, why cover a game if you don't like it, why keep playing if you think it's trash? So that it changes. For the better. Like a live service is supposed to. This may be the first rodeo for many of you, but it isn't mine. And we may not have gotten a roadmap for this game, but I'm making my own roadmap of how not to handle a game like this in the future and potentially these videos will serve as quite the educational piece of history.